cannot believe this. Meeting reset. But you're attempting to you're looking here, parents continuing to interrupt the meeting with outbursts. No word yet on what exactly the parents were uh, talking about or pointing out or what led to this. Another exciting evening here at the Carmel Clay School Board meeting. Now, what's interesting is that the media didn't interview any parents uh, for any of their uh, news out, newscasts or their articles, uh, which is interesting and kind of telling because usually they do interview parents after an event like this. So I wanted to share with you exactly what happened last night. And then what happens when the, what happened when the board walked out? Uh, there was some really great conversation that took place, and then what happened when they came back? Now, for those of you who are new to the circus, I'm going to give you some context because you're probably wondering how in the world did parents get to this position, and how did a, a, a school board become public enemy number one essentially in an otherwise beautiful city in a school district that was actually really really excellent? So here's the context: in July 22nd, on July 22nd. A bunch of parents read from sexually explicit books. These were just really obscene books uh, or gender propaganda as young as kindergarten, second grade. And they got up during the public, the official public comments of the July 22nd school board meeting and read from the books. The reason why they read from the books is because uh, the efforts to, 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 to work and tell the school board that, hey, there's all this gender propaganda, there's all this sexually obscene material, there's all this race baiting going on in school went completely unanswered. Uh, you either met with them and they either run out the clock or they give you these canned responses, equity, inclusion, you know, that whole thing. And so parents took it upon themselves to read, to show the community what's in our schools. A lot of parents woke up because they had no idea, no idea that these books, this kind of material was in our schools. Now you would think that the school board in response would be more open, more transparent would talk about putting things in place so that parents can review material, that teachers can't just bring in materials that they want to. Nope, not this school board. Dr. Beresford and the Carmel Clay School Board, in response to the July 22nd reading, decided to close public comments. Yes, that was their response. And they moved the meeting from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. for the month of August so that less parents can attend. And so what you saw tonight is parents saying, no, you're not going to silence us. And so uh, you're going to see the clip of them, uh, of, of the first person uh, standing up, uh, saying what, she's, what she said, and then the board walking out. And then you'll see a few clips of parents having some conversations. And then I'll come back and talk about what happened when, they, uh, when the board came back. So here we go. We're about to be voted on. Thank you for revision 01673. Excuse me. Regarding Consent. public comment. Who Excuse me, you're out of see? order. I mean, are you kidding me? Excuse me, you're out of order. And decorum on how to speak? And the meeting. I cannot believe this. Meeting reset. Att meeting reset. You're attempting to silence us again. Meeting reset. Meeting reset. Meeting reset. Meeting reset. Meeting reset. Are you scared to hear from the public? This all started when we pointed out the vile books in the school. Yeah, they couldn't take it. When this truth, they wanted to bury the truth. And then from that moment on, they wanted to shut up the parents. Of course they don't want the parents in. Because if the parents are actually in the schools, they'll discover what's going on. And now they don't want us talking. Additionally, did you guys know that safety referendum that the Carmel residents all voted for? Do you know where some of that money <clears throat> went? Oh, yeah. Where to go? $94,000 went to hire a DEI administrator. They'll DEI. never get another one. We won't that is not safety. <laughs> that is not a safety referendum. So they're not listening now. to the parents at all. And then we have hundreds of, uh, of students that are pulled by their parents out of the school, and somehow that's because we're not getting enough people in Carmel. <laughs> Please. <laughs> people are pulling their kids from the school for a reason. And they took $2 million when they yeah. went. $2 million bucks is a starting point. Okay. It's only and then they go blame higher. it on the housing <laughs> or find some other excuse. Right. <laughs> yes. Yet what they'll do 
know is they'll cut teachers. They'll cut teachers and, and, and put more administration on. More diversity, Please inclusion, go. and equity. More die. Less it, academic and excellence. less academic excellence. Are you not amazed how we can sit here and have the civil conversation? This is what they need to open up. Not this nonsense of sitting here and having 30 minutes at the end with three minutes and then being cut off. We have things to say, whether they're for or against. I know there's several parties here at different ends, but let's go. Let's open up public comment for hours. Let's have something massive happen. We've got so much property at the Carmel High School. Fill up the football field. Q&A with everything, with everyone. Can you have the board come back and answer my question of why my junior can't write in cursive? This agenda goes until 9 p.m. There's no reason that they shouldn't be ready. They go to school with uh, white kids. They have kids. They went to a party yesterday. They were not brown. None of them were brown. Getting along. They don't see that color. You guys bring that color into it. They don't see that. They don't see that they're different. You guys do. The adults. And if you talk about education, it all goes back to excellence in education. That's all we're striving for. For everyone. We just want our kids taught. We just want them taught excellence in education. Is, yep. is there any, any ever a discussion in these in these meetings? This is my first time here, and I, I apologize. I probably should have been here long. It's not usually like this. But, <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know. Have you ever sat back and given a discussion of how mathematics education is being improved? They're not no. letting us. No. They want to have a discussion. There's no, no discussion no, about what the core the, the features of what's what I'm paying taxes for. No, no. no. no they don't. Don't bring it to me. Being an engineer, I'm concerned about it. I'm, I'm at the end of my career, okay? I, I'm, it's not going to really matter that much to me, but what bothers me is that I hear of colleges that are accepting people in engineering programs and they can't start out with the same level of educational requirements that they did 25, 30 years ago. They have to go back to remedial <coughs> because the high school... So you can see parents have just had enough. They're not going to be silent and the board has no authority to silence parents. These are their children. They're dropping children off at a school, trusting that simply academics will be taking place. And you'll notice in the conversation, nobody talked about values or religion or their values. They're talking about just academics. That's all they want. That's it. That's, that's what these parents simply want. That's not a lot to ask. And so you see that when the, when the board refused to listen to parents, when they're asking for the bare minimum of just good academics, which is what Carmel Clay schools have always been known for, this is just a travesty. Now, Beresford did come back later to try to coerce the group to be silent because they wanted to move on with the meeting, and you can see parents just weren't having it. They're just fed up. If we could have some civility. When you guys raised our taxes me. so much for the, um, Excuse the me. officers in schools, are they Excuse in all the schools me. right now? Excuse me. Is that, is that what we're talking about? If too? I could finish. Thank you. All right, after that, um, we need to pay the bills. So we need to complete that. We didn't answer so we need to be heard. Yeah, so so we need to be heard, after and that, we would like a civil me. conversation. No, so will you excuse take time, me. and would you excuse me, would you take time about, to have a civil conversation with us? We're asking for an audience. It doesn't feel good to be shut up, doesn't it? Uh, after uh, after he left, they did come back and try to run the meeting, uh, and the parents continued to stand up and speak their piece, and then eventually they did allow some public comments and then uh, on certain topics, and then the parents went up and, and talked about that. So here we go. Emotional physical needs must be addressed. Why is this the only mention of academics in kind the school board's job is to manage the administrators whose job it is to educate our children. Why is that not number one priority? He's like the Katie, you said you're setting our kids up for the future. Next on the I agenda, I have a junior that can't write in person. We have How is that setting him up? 5.2 through 5.13. Not at all. Not at all. You're failing our students. 
Next guiding principle, students and employees in excel when held to high personal standards and expectations. Is this true? Then again, why are test scores plummeting? Five, Our corporation six, results six, in 2021 were a failure in English Next, and math. Agenda, Focus on academic excellence and stop hiring employees and distancing teachers that do not promote academic excellence. I know some of and you up there. I voted table. for some of you up there. Thank you, Remember Katie. us. Thank you, Louise. We have a first from Katie and The test scores that have just gone down over the last seven years. I don't know if I Why are the parents finding explicit books Thank in you. the schools? Isn't that supposed to be your job? And why are you not listening to us? Why are you not listening? All those in favor of seats on the table. Excuse me, Dr. B. I don't think it's appropriate at this point to raise the teacher's salaries. I don't think that they're providing us academic excellence. Thank you very much. So we are raising the teachers without raising our academic excellence. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know that you are looking at raises for our teachers, and I know very well that our teachers work very hard. Unfortunately, starting in 2014, the academic scores for the Carmel Clay school systems have declined. We are now at the point where we've lost double digits. We've lost the double digits in terms of our students' academic excellence. They're not performing, and they're not performing because you all are making them do things. SEL, DEI. You are taking away valuable academic teaching time. CCS guiding principle, open and transparent communication maintains stakeholder trust. That is your guiding principle. If open and transparent communication is a guiding principle, then why is this school board not sharing curriculum like SEL and sex ed? And why are they attempting to silence parents and the community through policy 0167.3 and 9600? By the way, whatever happened to a policy to prevent children from having access to sexually explicit material in our libraries? I've been a longtime businesswoman, a senior executive, and there is no way that we would ever be compensated without results. We have seen over a 30-point decline in the proficiency of our children's English and math scores since 2014, consistently going down each year through this year. And yet, you're going to still continue to increase their compensation, and you do this with administration as well. I'd like to ask you when you're going to link their compensation to the actual results. Yeah. They're pushing back on parents. That simply says that building with the names, the word school on it should only be about academics. We're not asking you to teach anything else that I believe in or someone else believe in. They just focus on academics. That's it. That's the ask. So this is where we're at. Parents who want just pure academics to not see the score sliding down over the last several years since they brought in all this stuff, all this political ideology, they're just saying, focus back on academics. That's extreme today. Think about that. Think about that. Parents are simply saying, I want to focus on academics. That's it. And that's the pushback. And the parents that want that, they're the bad guys. That's how radical our public schools have gotten, even in here in Indiana in the Midwest. So I want to encourage 
parents, not just in Carmel, okay, in all of Indiana, stop complying. Stop obeying these insane, tyrannical school boards that's trying to silence you. These people aren't overlords. Each of you individually has to step up and you have to step up now, whether it be to a teacher, to a principal, to a superintendent, or to entire school board. You have to fight for your kids and you can't go by whatever ridiculous policies that they're gonna to try to pass to silence you. Because once they silence you, they're just gonna put that indoctrination into your kids. And that's what they're doing right now. We exist because parents have, have outsourced their responsibility and they think schools are still the schools that they grew up in and that's not the case. So I encourage all of you, if you've gotten anything out from us, please start standing up for your kids, start fighting for your kids, start being aggressive because if you don't, if you don't, you're gonna lose your kids. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys soon.